You have successfully joined the webcast. Please stand by. The meeting will begin shortly. Good morning. This is Debbie Royce, Empire State Development's Corporate Secretary. I'd like to welcome everyone to this morning's meeting. And before we formally begin, I would ask that everyone please mute your line until you're speaking. As we have our directors joining this morning by video, we'll do a quick roll call before we get started. Hope Knight, Acting Commissioner of the Department of Economic Development. Present. Kevin Yunus as the designee for the Acting Commissioner. Present. Howard Zemsky. Present. Eric Gertler. Present. Cesar Perales. Present. Michael Rosen. Present. And Benson Martin, designee for Acting Superintendent of the Department of Financial Services, Adrian Harris. Present. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining today. And Acting Chair Eunice, you can begin. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, before I call this meeting to order, I will note for the record that I will briefly serve as the Acting Chair for today's meeting before handing things off uh, to Hope Knight. I now call to order the meeting of the directors of the New York State Urban Development Corporation, DBA Empire State Development, for Thursday, November 18th, 2021. I'd like to ask everyone to please mute your audio until you are ready to speak. Also, anyone wishing to speak, please be sure to state your name before you begin so that you can be identified for folks joining us via teleconference. I'd also like to note for the record that in accordance with recently passed legislation, this meeting will be conducted by video and teleconference. I also know for the record that the public was given an opportunity to comment on the agenda items by submitting their written comments by noon yesterday. State for the record that 10 comments were received from the public concerning today's agenda item 5A relating to the World Trade Center and Cultural Program Land Use Improvement and Civic Project. These comments were shared with the directors and are posted to today's meeting page on ESD's website and will become part of the corporate record of today's meeting. As always, the directors have received written materials in advance of today's meeting and are free to ask questions at any time. At this time, I will ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on the agenda. If so, I would please ask that you make an appropriate disclosure on the record and we will remind you to recuse yourself from any discussion or vote with regard to such item or items. All right, hearing none. Um, the first item on today's agenda is the approval of the minutes for October 21st, 2021 directors meeting. Uh, again, reminding everybody to state your names before speaking. Are there questions, comments, additions, or deletions with regard to this item? Howard, I'll move the uh, minutes. All right. So I got a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Uh, it is my pleasure to now ask the directors to approve the appointment of Hope Knight as an officer of the corporation, specifically its president and chief executive officer designate. Governor Hoke will announce the appointment of Hope as president and CEO designate and her plan to nominate her to that position last month. Hope will be also be nominated to serve as commissioner of the New York State Department of Economic Development, which also requires Senate confirmation. Hope most recently served as president and CEO of the Greater Jamaica Development Corporation since 2015. In that capacity, she advanced the economic growth and community building and sustainable real estate development that revitalized and strengthened the Southeast Queens region. Prior to leading GJDC, she was chief operating officer of the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone overseeing over 150 million in investments and leveraging a billion in private capital and working on such projects as the East River Plaza, Potamkin East Harlem, and the Victoria Theater and Hotel. For the past six years, Hope served on the New York City Planning Commission. She also served as vice president of Morgan, at Morgan Stanley in the Institutional Equities Division, US, and as vice president of strategic planning and e-commerce, e Morgan Stanley, Japan. Earlier in her career, Hope worked at Accenture and in New York City government. 
She served on a number of boards, including the Regional Plan Association, True Front Financial, Grameen America, Morgan Stanley Community Development Advisory Board, East Harlem Tutorial Program, and Jack and Jill of America Foundation. She's also the immediate past chair of the Board of Trustees of Marymount Manhattan College and was a member of ABNY's 2020 Census Organizing Action Committee. Uh, she holds a BA from Marymount Manhattan College and an MBA from the Graduate School of Business at the University of Chicago. The directors are requested to appoint Hope Knight to the Office of President and CEO Designate effective as of November 15th, 2021. Confirm that she is an officer of the corporation within the meaning of the bylaws of the corporation, including indemnification provisions thereof, and ratify any and all actions heretofore taken in such capacity. Are there any questions or comments from the directors? All well, right. We're excited to have you, Hope, and thank you for uh, for joining ESD. It's a it's a good day. Thank you. Uh, all right. Any other comments? Uh, I just echo Howard's uh, Howard's comments that. Um, uh, you know, Howard was in the role before me. It was one of the great privileges of my life, and I hope it's the same for you, Hope. I wish you uh, much success. I wish you um, all good things, and uh, you have a great organization with a great mission and a great team. So um, thank you. I, you'll, I think you'll have a fantastic time. Uh, I do want wow, to I... express uh, my congratulations. Look forward to working with you, Hope. Yes, you too. Thank you. While I'm while I'm still empowered to make uh, such comments, I would say I've I've had the, uh, the the good fortune to work with Hope over the last few days. I'm I like to think of myself as a pretty good judge of character, and I'm 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 really excited about Hope being here, and I think uh, she's going to really do great in this position. So I'm I'm excited uh, to have you and and welcome, and congratulations. All right. As noted earlier, uh, we do not have any com comments from the public with regard to this item, and I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. The motion carries. Congratulations, Hope. I will now turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, Kevin. And before continuing with our agenda, I'd like to take a moment to share some remarks. Uh, good morning, directors, and it is an honor and a privilege for me to join you today, albeit virtually, for my first board meeting in this capacity. I'd like to begin by thanking Governor Kathy Hochul for the opportunity to lead ESD and to work together with my fellow board members to promote economic growth across New York State during this very critical time. For more than six years, I served as the president and CEO of the Greater Jamaica Development Corporation promoting community building efforts and projects that generate sustainable economic growth. And as Kevin said before that, I worked for the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone for 12 years as Chief Operating Officer, working on transformational projects like Potamkin, East Harlem, the Victoria Theater and Hotel, and East River Plaza. I also served on the New York City Planning Commission and worked in the private sector. While the professional experience that I bring to this job has been mostly downstate, it has been focused in places that have been historically underserved and under-resourced, like Jamaica and Upper Manhattan, and that is not a uniquely downstate issue. While there is no one-size-fits-all approach to economic development, I believe in community empowerment where state and local government collaborate with stakeholders to encourage new investments and create jobs. In many ways, it's an extension of the efforts already underway through the state's Regional Economic Development Council initiative. While this is my first week, I think I've hit the ground running, meeting with the leadership team and having conversations with ESD staff. Those conversations will continue across the organization and in coming weeks, I plan to travel the state to visit our regional offices and tour some of the projects underway. There is something to be said for first impressions. Needless to say, I'm 
very proud of the opportunity to lead ESD and to work with such a group of talented professionals. ESD has a well-earned reputation across both the public and private sectors for its effectiveness and ability to get things done on behalf of the people of New York. That is due in large part to the smart, capable, hardworking people who serve here and whom I am now honored to call colleagues. I look forward to working together to build a stronger New York State. There are many great things happening in the state right now, made possible by the efforts of ESD, and so many more to come. So in closing, I'd like to thank the staff of ESD for their commitment to the people of New York State. I'm grateful for the work that you do day in and day out to keep the economic engine of the state running. I'd also like to acknowledge Kevin Yunus for his warm welcome to me and keen guidance. In the past few months, Kevin has taken on responsibilities of the commissioner's office in addition to his own professional obligation. Kevin wears many hats here at ESD, but I appreciate him being a strong right hand as I begin my tenure. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you again Thank you. to my fellow directors. I'm excited to work together and draw on our collective experience along with chairman nominee Kevin Law to continue advancing economic growth across New York State. And finally, I want to thank one member of the ESD team in particular, uh, Pravina Raghavan. Unfortunately for me, Pravina is leaving just as I'm starting, but she is going to be an enormous asset to us from her new position as director of the Hollingsworth Manufacturing Extension Partnership at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Washington, D.C., where she will be supporting and rebuilding the advanced manufacturing sector across the United States. Pravina and her team have done extraordinary work helping small businesses and those companies who were particularly impacted by the pandemic. We wish her well on her return to federal service. And thank you. And so now I will ask Pravina Raghavan, ESD's Executive Vice President of the Division of Small Business and Technology, to provide us with a status report of the COVID-19 Pandemic Small Business Recovery Program. Pravina, when you're ready, please begin. Thank you very much, and thank you for those kind words, and welcome to ESD. Uh, I can speak for my team. We're very excited to have you on board with your vast economic development experience and um, helping especially uh, low moderate income areas really start to be part of the community. So thank you very much. Um, uh, this is my final uh, report to the board. Uh, uh, last month, I had come to talk about the pandemic grant program. As you know, we reported we had 11,955 grants for 190 million last month. I'm proud to announce we have over uh, 20,888 grants uh, dispersed for $353 million, which is a 43% increase in the number of grants um, in the last month. And we are continuing uh, to process grants every day. Uh, some areas of, uh, several areas of the focus of the program, uh, we were supposed to support businesses that did not get any or very federal, uh, very little federal assistance and micro businesses in particular, businesses that employ 10 or less employees. 98.8% of the grants have gone to micro businesses. We're supposed to support socially and economically disadvantaged, disadvantaged businesses, which include veteran owned and disabled owned businesses owners. And 47% of those grants have gone to the to, um, socially and economically disadvantaged individual business owners. And then finally, MWBEs, 83% of the grants have gone to MWBEs. We've received over 118 applications, but um, only 42,000 are valid, uh, have actually submitted valid applications. We have a lot of applications that people just started in the system and never continued, which means they never finished the questionnaire or they never supported the documents. We continue to do outreach to those individuals to make sure that it, if they needed help, they could use our vast technical uh, assistance partners, uh, the 69 centers that we have going around. And just as a reminder, they've helped already about 20,000 businesses um, go through this process and have done um, logged in over <laughs> 15,000 phone calls. So 
they're working very hard to make sure that we really get those micro and the smallest of the small. On August 25th, uh, Governor Hochul announced the, the expansion, eligibility expansion of the program, which increased gross receipts up to $2.5 million, and businesses that received two, more than less than $250,000 in PPP were eligible for the grant. Um, just to give you an idea, we've received over 3,400 applications from these larger small businesses, and 2,087 of them have been funded for $103 million. So they are going at a 60% approval rate, which we expected because these are businesses that tend to have more accountants and uh, legal services at their fingertips, so can be able to file the documents quite quickly. Um, again, on, October, on November 8th, um, Governor Hochul announced plans to introduce legislation in January 2020 to, to, uh, to the legislative session to create a $200 million program designed to support start uh, businesses that started during the pandemic or just prior to the pandemic. As a recollection, recollection uh, the, the grant is eligible for businesses that were uh, in business prior to the pandemic, so prior to March 1st, 2019. This is actually looking for businesses that started after March 1st, 2019. Uh, the Ford Lick Initiative will be part of the $800 million. Uh, there's no nothing to report at this time. We're still working through all the details, but that will be something in January that will become announced um, working with the legislature. So the team continues and we continue to get this critical grant funding to support small businesses uh, through the recovery. And uh, we appreciate everybody's help in getting the word out uh, to more small businesses. We continue to be in our digital campaign and have ads going on, but we really are looking to make sure that if any business did not get any help from the federal government um, and is still looking for support to come to us and we have uh, still funding available. And on a personal note, um, I just want to thank everyone at ESD uh, and particularly on this board uh, for their partnership and support during my tenure at ESD. Uh, it, it has been an amazing ride, uh, and this last $800 million and another $500 million from the feds for SSD Sky has been an amazing time to be able to work with my team. And I want to thank my small business team. Um, they have been phenomenal, uh, in particular, Ray Salabarius, Martha Tora, Matt Watson, and Jennifer Teagan, who work closely with me every day, uh, supporting the 30 programs that we at ESD provide to small businesses. Uh, my, they're amazing public servants and very dedicated in assisting and growing the small businesses in the great state of New York. And I know my team uh, it will continue to do their, their amazing efforts uh, after my departure, but I will be working with some of them um, with MEP. So I look forward to helping to support New York State as a federal employee. So I'm happy to take questions on anything, <laughs> either topic. Thank you. Ravina, it's, it's Eric. I want to um, wish you much success in your new role and you know, uh, and, and thank you and recognize you for all the accomplishments you had. It was a real privilege to work with you. And if the past is prologue, I know you'll do some great stuff in Washington. So thank you for your service. Thanks. Most people don't know this, but I, I when I was at ESD, um, we kept the, the position of head of small business open for a year we couldn't find anybody who was any remotely as qualified as Pravina, and I would just call her every two months. I think around the sixth time I called in 14 months in, we finally uh, finally accepted, but she's been an amazing uh, asset for ESD over her years there, and I just want to recognize her for her accomplishments. We continued to expand her portfolio over time, and... Um, Thank you for that, Pravina, and I know you'll you'll be uh, you'll do great in your new position, and I'm glad that you'll continue to work collaboratively with ESD. Thank you. I'll turn it back to you, Hope. <laughs> thank you for your report, Pravina, and thank you for your service. We will now move to the project section of today's agenda. Regional directors and program staff are on the line with us today to present their items and to answer any related questions. Vinny Exposito will start things off with an item from our Finger Lakes region. Vinny, when you're ready, please begin. Good morning, Hope. Uh, welcome aboard and congratulations. Uh, look forward to working with you and, and hosting you here in Rochester where I'm based as the Finger Lakes Regional Director. I'd also like to thank Pravina as well. I didn't realize we had to beg her that much, Howard, to get her on board, but it's been a real pleasure working with you and, and we're gonna miss you. 
Um, but uh, today it's uh, my privilege to bring one item for the director's consideration. Uh, it's a $700,000 capital grant from the Upstate Revitalization Initiative for Optimax Systems to support the construction and expansion of their facility in the town of Ontario in Wayne County, where they produce high-precision optical lenses that are primarily used in the semiconductor defense medical and aerospace industries, and optics, photonics, and imaging is one of the key strategic industry sectors for the Finger Lakes Rochester region. Uh, the company purchased an adjacent property and constructed a 47,000 square foot expansion, which doubled its capacity <clears throat> to create space for more coding machines and equipment. They spent more than $10 million on machinery and equipment. The project in total was over $22 million. It was completed this September. Uh, it created and has already created 59 jobs, and in addition to our 700,000 URI grant, there was an Excelsior tax credit incentive worth $1.5 million. I'd be happy to take uh, any questions on this project. I'd like to remind everyone to state your names before speaking. Are there any questions or comments from the directors with regard to item 2A as presented by Vinny Exposito? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now entertain a motion for approval. So moved, Benson Martin. Second. Second, Eric Gertler. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, the motion carries. Uh, we will now have Jen Fail and Steve Gorlick, who will present three items from our central New York region. Once Jim provides the presentations on the first two items, we will take separate votes on each of those items, and then we will call on Steve to present the third item. Jim, when you're ready to begin with Nick's Ride for Friends Capital Project. Thank you, and uh, welcome aboard, Hope, and I look forward to working with you. Uh, the board is uh, being asked to approve a $931,801 grant on a $1.6 million project. This is a downtown revitalization initiative round three project uh, for NICS for RIDE. This project is uh, focused on rehabbing a three-story structure in Auburn, New York to house a, a comprehensive recovery treatment and health care services. This will allow the uh, organization to inc increase its capacity from 20 people to 75 people. Uh, this project was completed in August of 2021. The next project that I'm presenting is a <clears throat> round nine uh, regional council project and it's for United Auto Supply so that they can construct a 100,000 square foot warehouse distribution center. Uh, this will uh, lead to the hiring of 50 new people as well as retaining their current employment of 399. It's a $1 million grant on an $11.8 million project and there's also $797,000 in Excelsior tax credits associated with this project and it was completed also in August of 2021 and I would be glad to take any questions. I'd like to remind everyone to please state your names before speaking. Are there any questions or comments from the directors on either of these two items? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to these items. I will now entertain a motion for the approval of item 2B, Nick's Ride for Friends Capital Project, as presented by Jim Bale. Benson Martin, so move. Second. Cesar Perales will second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. I will now in I will now entertain motion to approve item two C UAS Capital Project, also presented by Jim Fail. Michael Rosen moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
thank you. The motion carries. And now Steve Golick will present the third item from our central New York region. Steve, when you're ready, please begin. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is an unusual item uh, to the directors as staff are recommending that the project and the grant not be approved by the board. Um, the proposed grant is to Corvena Ransler Street Company 3 LLC for a project involving the construction of two mixed-use buildings in the city of Syracuse that are part of the redevelopment of Syracuse's Inner Harbor. Uh, just a little bit of background. In July of 2015, CORE applied for a grant through the Consolidated Funding Application. The CFA was reviewed by the Central New York Regional Economic Development Council and was recommended for funding. In April 2016, an incentive proposal was executed between CORE and ESD to move the project forward. Uh, the matter was Pre, uh, going to be presented to the ESD board back in July of 2016, but prior to that, ESD was served a subpoena from the United States Department of Justice asking for documents that included CORE and any of its subsidiaries or affiliated companies. As a result, the staff did not move the project item forward. Ultimately, two individuals of CORE were indicted and convicted after two separate jury trials of various fe federal felonies. Uh, one of the persons convicted was Joseph Girardi, who signed the application, and the other was Steve Aiello, the president of CORE, who executed the incentive proposal. The underlying facts of those two proceedings both involve ESD grant-funded projects. In one, Aiello was convicted of paying an aid to the governor's office to induce him to pressure ESD to reverse a previous decision that affected funding for a CORE project that was part of the redevelopment of the Syracuse Inner Harbor. The project before the board today is also part of that larger Inner Harbor project. In the second criminal proceeding, Girardi and Aiello were convicted of bid rigging that allowed them to be named as preferred developers for projects in Syracuse. As a result, core development was selected to build two projects that were funded by state grants, including ESD funding that was previously approved by this board. A uh, court completed the current project and then requested, made a request to ESD that it be funded. Uh, staff did not move the matter forward for consideration. Uh, CORE ultimately sued, and as a result of a court decision, ESD was ordered to place the matter on the ESD board agenda for consideration. In compliance with that order, we are moving the matter for consideration. Uh, the materials lay out the staff recommendations uh, which we believe each constitute an independent basis for denial of the project. But in sum, it's the failure to meet the responsibility provisions of Executive Order 192, as well as the representations made by CORE in its application for funding that include that no senior manager or principal of CORE has ever been charged or convicted of a felony. This is an ongoing program requirement that CORE cannot meet. The second reason is that the, by the terms of the IP, it expired. The third is that there were material changes and circumstances in the project with respect to the ownership of CORE when Girardi and Aiello transferred their ownership interests after they became convicted felons. And the last one is the failure to comply with the provisions of the IP, which require that the grant be paid out during the construction of the project. This is important since it deprived ESD of any oversight, especially considering the cloud this project was under from the beginning. Based on the foregoing, staff recommend that the grant not be approved. However, if the board believes that the project should move forward, and I would point out that included in the materials to the board are core submission of why it should be approved. If the core is, board is inclined to move it forward, the board should adopt the general project plan and make the required environmental findings as laid out in the materials, and staff will move the project forward through the normal process. Thank you, and I will answer any questions. I'd like to remind everyone to please state your names before speaking. Are there any questions or comments from the director with regards to item 2D as presented by Steve Garland? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now entertain a motion for disapproval. Well, can we just be clear? Um, that it's the approval, it's a not, it's the, the motion is not to approve the project and not to approve the grants in accordance with the resolutions that were submitted uh, to the board, just to be clear on what the vote is. Yes. Okay. 
So if we, sorry, it's Howard. So if we um, adopt the resolution uh, affirmatively, it is a vote to not to approve it. That's correct. You're voting not to approve the project in accordance with the resolutions that were submitted um, to the board. But again, you know, that's the uh, board's prerogative. It could um, make a different decision based and not follow the staff's recommendation. So I will entertain the motion to adopt the resolution not to approve the project. As Yes, as submitted in the draft as, materials. As submitted in the draft materials. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Benson Martin, so move. Second. Professor Perales, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, the motion carries. Steve Hunt will now present an item from our North Country region. Steve, when you're ready, please begin. Good morning, Ms. Knight and board members. I'll be presenting one project from the North Country awarded a regional council capital grant. Uh, we are seeking board authorization to release $500,000 to the town of Orleans for a portion of a $15.4 million uh, project to construct a new water treatment facility, a new low profile water storage tank and installation of a new distribution system for a portion of the town in Jefferson County. As part of the uh, financing, Environmental Facilities Corporation provided a loan in the amount of $7 million for the project and the town invested uh, $7.8 million of its equity in the new facility. In addition to the providing an adequate drinking water source to designated areas within the town, uh, along with New York State Route 12 corridor, and riverfront communities, the project will help protect existing agricultural and commercial development and incentivize new investments along the corridor. The project is consistent with the North Country REDC goal of improving infrastructure throughout the region, both to protect the region's clean water resources and to support community development. The town has made the investment and the project is complete upon satisfying its obligations under the incentive proposal ESD is recommending that the board authorize the release of $500,000 for this project. I'd like to remind everyone to state your names before speaking. Are there any questions or comments from the directors with regard to item 2E as presented by Steve Hunt? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now entertain a motion for approval. That's Howard Zemsky, a motion to approve. Eric second. Erler, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Mike Ivoli will now present an item from our capital region. Mike, when you're ready. Thank you and, and good morning. Today, I'm requesting the directors approve a $1 million regional council capital grant to Queenman's Recycling Center, LLC, doing business as Queenman's Industrial Park for a portion of the cost associated with the construction of a new 74,000 square foot barge repair, barge repair facility, creating a unique indoor barge repair facility, intermodal distribution center, and training facility in the town of Queenman's Albany County. The total project cost is just over $10,700,000. Queenman's Industrial Park was formed in 2012 and is a member of the Carver Company's Carver Company family, which was formed in 1989. Queenland's Industrial Park provides build to suit warehouse and industrial facilities at and adjacent to the Port of Queenland's. The recently completed Marine Barge Repair Facility can accommodate up to four 900 ton barges in a climate controlled environment, allowing maintenance to occur year round. This facility has heated floors, roll up doors, across the front to help increase efficiency of welding and other necessary repair operations. The new facility is also going to operate as a state-of-the-art intermodal distribution center and will be utilized as a skilled labor training center. Um, Harvard company, family company has a total of 417 employees in New York, most of which are located here at the Port of Queemans. Since the signing of the contract, Harvard Companies has hired 126 people, 69 of which 
are, are uh, in direct support of the BARS repair facility. So this puts the grantee at uh, the second contract threshold, uh, which will uh, allow a pay the first two payments to come. They've met the spending requirement. Um, in fact, they've exceeded it. They've spent, uh, in fact, over $12 million when you include the equipment. Um, and the final payment will be held until they reach the total number of 80 committed jobs. Um, the project aligns with the REDC's gateway strategy designed to connect our regions to, the, to, to other markets and vice versa. Uh, this strategy relies heavily on investments in our port facilities, of which we have two, and we feel have been critical to helping secure um, significant announcements recently related to offshore wind um, deployment. The most recent of which was on October 8th, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin and, and Kevin Eunice both attended an event at the Port of Queemans announcing Sunrise Offshore, uh, announcing a, a, uh, a, an aspect of the project related to Sunrise Winds offshore deployment, uh, which will involve an $86 million contract at this facility. So these facilities, uh, these repair facilities are critical to moving uh, goods um, along the Hudson River uh, and eventually overseas or in deployment offshore. And I'd like to... I'd like to remind everyone to please state your names before speaking. Are there any questions or comments from the directors with regard to item 2F as presented by Mike Yopi? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now entertain a motion for approval. Benson Martin, so moved. Second. Michael Rosen, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, Kara Longworth will now present an item from our Long Island region. Kara, please begin when you're ready. Uh, thank you, Hope, and good morning, and good morning, directors. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm asking the directors to approve a regional council grant of up to $1,340,000 to the town of Riverhead to pay for a portion of the cost and design of an upgraded sewage treatment plant in Calverton, which is in Suffolk County. The project is complete for a total project cost of uh, just under $10.9 million. This was a round three priority project for the regional council. This upgraded sewage treatment plant and a relocated discharge outflow was a critical and necessary infrastructure project for the future reuse and redevelopment of a former Naval Weapons Industrial Reserve plant. Uh, which is now re referred to as Enterprise Park at Calverton, or, or short, for short, EPCAL. Uh, this site was a 2,900-acre uh, site owned by the Navy, which was leased to Grumman, uh, and it were, uh, operated as a final assembly and uh, test testing for military planes since the 1950s. The town of Riverhead acquired the property from the federal government in 1998 with the requirement that it be used for economic development purposes to replace the lost defense jobs. State's been working for the last two, de uh, the town has been working for the last two decades to redevelop the site. To use the site for industrial use, the town needed to construct a larger wastewater treatment plant and relocate the discharge away from the estuary to satisfy the DEC requirements as well as the uh, county health department for any proposed future development. The new plant can now handle 150,000 gallons of sewage a day and discharges away from the ne nearby estuary, reducing the nitrogen levels, which is a consistent problem on Long Island. On Long Island. The town is currently under contract to sell 600 acres to a developer that will be required to build up to a million uh, square feet of industrial space. 500 of the acres are all, all already developed with several companies are already operating there, several of which have received ESC funding to expand. The project is, was completed in June and the grant's ready for disbursement. Happy to answer any questions. I'd like to remind everyone to please state your names before speaking. Are there any questions or comments from the directors with regard to item 2G as presented by Carol Longworth? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now entertain a motion for approval. I will accept the motion to approve. Second. Eric Gertler, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Next, we will have an at the direction of grant item, which will be presented by Simone Bethune. Simone, please begin when you're ready. 
Thank you, Hope. Um, good morning to everyone. My name is Simone Bethune. I'm a senior project manager in uh, the Loans and Grants Department. Today, the directors are being asked to approve a modification to a $5,303,374 grant originally approved on October 17, 2013, and authorized in the fiscal year 2011-2012 New York State budget. The funding was made available by the Executive Chamber from the Local Assistance Special Appropriation Hurricane Irene Program in conjunction with the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services Disaster Assistance Program for flood mitigation and flood control projects in the Schoharie County Mohawk Valley region. The requested modification involves three amendments to the original project plan, the first of which would add $4,150,000 in funding to the original grant, making the total award $9,453,374. The second amendment the directors are being asked to approve is to permit modification to the project scope, which will expand work to include stream bank and stream channel stabilization floodplain restoration, and corrective action work to repair or correct initial restoration work to reduce future flooding and protect evacuation routes in the project locations of Little Schoharie, Line Creek, and Platter Kill. Mm. These locations were severely damaged by flooding in 2011 from Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee. Flood damage included major stream bank erosion and instability stream channel degradation, and water quality degradation. Finally, the directors are being asked to approve a modification to the project investment, which is now expected to increase to $41.9 million from the original $23.9 million total project cost. The completion date for the Little Schoharie Creek project phase is December 2022. Post-construction monitoring and maintenance will run through December 2027. For the Lion Creek and the Platter Kill project phases, construction will be completed by December 2023, and post-construction monitoring and maintenance will run through December 2028. Um, and I can take any questions. Are there any questions or comments from the directors with regard to item 3A as presented by Simone Bethune? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now take entertain a motion to approve. Benson Martin, I, so moved. I will second, second Tessa Perales. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Next, we have two New York Ventures investment items, which will be presented by Jonathan Green and Momo B. After both in investments are presented, we will take a vote on each item. Jonathan, please begin with the investment in Echoletro, Inc. Thank you, Hope, and uh, welcome to the EFC team. And uh, really quickly, I just wanted to extend my personal thanks to Pravina for her leadership um, in, in running our division. You will be uh, missed, uh, but I'm sure we will find someone to lead our team with uh, equal leadership and humor. Um, the directors are being asked to approve an investment of up to $500,000 into a Series A preferred equity round uh, in Eco Electro. Proceeds from this financing will be used to continue to increase their team in Ithaca, New York, transition into a pilot scale processing facility and finalize testing for key customers. Uh, Eco Electro is an Ithaca based innovator of disruptive, low cost, high performance polymers for electrochemical applications. The company is developing an alkaline exchange ionomer based membrane technology, which is a key product used in the production of green hydrogen. Current membrane technology requires the use of expensive and scarce materials such as platinum, severely impacting uh, the economics of green hydrogen production, as well as the potential to meet the needs of the U.S. at projected scale production. Ecoelectra's patented and patent-pending uh, products 
uh, are made with commonly available metals such as aluminum and have a longer lifetime and are more manu manufacturable as a drop-in replacement for existing electrolysis units. Ecoelectra was founded by two Cornell-trained PhDs, and its founding intellectual property was based on research performed at Cornell University. The company's research and development facility is located in Ithaca, New York, where they have a team of seven individuals currently producing membranes for customers. The company previously raised $3.85 million in grants and $1.7 million in private capital. Again, we are requesting a $500,000 investment into a Series A preferred equity round in Eco Electro. And Momo, you can uh, make your presentation as well, and then we will um, talk about the two uh, investments after. Thank you, Hope. Good morning, directors. My name is Momo B. I am a senior director on the New York Ventures team. The directors are being asked to approve up to a million dollars investment in an up to four million dollars safe financing round into a company called Westper. Westper is a Cornell Tech Tech Neon runway company that provides seamless and accurate sleep health technology using wearable electronics hardware and machine learning algorithm user interface software for consumers and healthcare providers. According to Cleveland Clinic, about 70 million Americans suffer from sleep disorders. Typical sleep disorders include insomnia, sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, and narcolepsy. Another study by the National Sleep Foundation indicated that nearly seven out of every 10 Americans say they experience frequent sleep problems. Sleep disorders could cause various mild, serious, or fatal health and safety issues. Based on the 2020 data, sleep disorders cost the United States over $411 billion annually. Yet there are less than 5,000 sleep centers and labs in the United States. Patients usually must wait for weeks to go to a sleep lab and must sleep at the lab for at least one to two nights it's inefficient, costly, and uncomfortable. In order to solve this problem, Westper has developed smart patches for accurate and comprehensive sleep tests at home. The Bluetooth-enabled wireless char rechargeable patches collect data from eight precise channels to provide data that has 94% accuracy compared with traditional sleep labs and allows for sleep lab technicians and physicians to provide analysis and ongoing health coaching. The company's management team is composed of industry experts and thought leaders. The company has made significant progress in both product development and talent acquisition. In order to fund its activities over the next 8 to 12 months to raise Series A funding, the company is now raising a $4 million financing. New York Ventures team has will invest up to a million dollars into this round with the balance being provided by private sector investors. As part of the due diligence process, New York Venture staff and the external investment review committee evaluated the company's business plan and growth prospects as well as the terms of the investment. As a result of the analysis, New York Venture staff and the review committee have both agreed that the market opportunity and growth potential offered by this New York State company warrants an investment by the team and recommend its approval. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions or comments from the directors on either of these two investments? Uh, hi, it's Eric Gertler. I was just curious on both investments. Um, what, are, what is the, uh, uh, the valuations on, on each of those, both for the $500,000 investment for electric well, Electro and up to the $1 million investment in the, uh, in the second company. Hi, Eric, this is John. Uh, the the pre-money valuation on Eco Electro was $6 million and they're raising four, so post would be 10. Got it. Hi, Eric, for Westper, um, it's a 35 million post money cap for the safe. Got it. And how much are they raising, you think, in, the, in that case? 
Up to four million. Up to four million. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to these items. I will now entertain a motion for the approval of item 4A, the investment in Eco Electro Inc., as presented by Jonathan Green. I go Rosen moved. Second. Benson Martin, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. I will now entertain a motion for the approval of item 4B, the investment in Westbur, as presented by Momo B. Michael Rosen moved. Second. Benson, Benson Martin, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Uh, Toby. J.C. Yasimi will now present the agenda item related to the World Trade Center Memorial and Cultural Program Land Use Improvement and Civic Project. Toby, you can begin when you're ready. Thank you, Hope. Good morning, directors. My name is Toby Yasimi, part of the Real Estate and Community Relations team here at ESD. Um, the directors are being asked to take the following three actions adopt modifications to the World Trade Center Memorial and Cultural Program, Land Use Improvement and Civic Project Plan to allow for mixed use development, including residential, fitness, and community facility space, in addition to the already approved commercial use. Override applicable local zoning regulations to effectuate the proposed modifications and authorize staff to hold a public hearing on the proposed modifications. It should be noted that these actions launch the public review and approvals process for the proposed modifications to the general project plan and no final determinations are being made today. Before explaining the requested actions, I'd like to offer you some background on the World Trade Center general project plan and the project site. This GPP was originally adopted by the Lower Manhattan Development Corporation, LMDC, which is a subsidiary of ESD in 2004 to provide for memorial and cultural uses as well as commercial redevelopment of the World Trade Center after the attacks of, of, on September 11. The plan provides for five commercial towers, public open space, and a performing arts center surrounding the memorial and the museum sites. Site 5, the site of the fifth commercial tower, is located at 130 Liberty Street, which is the southernmost site of the World Trade Center campus and the location of the former Deutsche Bank building, which was severely damaged on 9-11. LMDC used HUD Community Development Block Grant Funds to acquire, remediate, and clear Site 5. The GPP currently allows for commercial and or hotel use on Site 5. In 2006, the Port Authority and LMDC entered into an MOU by which LMDC would swap 130 and 140 Liberty Street, including Site 5, with the Port Authority for property it owned at the center of the campus to en enable the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, as well as the Performing Arts Center, to be built within and proximate to the footprints of the Twin Towers. In response to Community Board 1 input, LMDC began discussions with the Port Authority about the possibility of allowing for residential development at Site 5. A few years later, in 2019, LMDC and the Port Authority entered into another MOU to jointly issue an RFP for Site 5 that would allow for as of right commercial development or mixed use development, including a requirement for an affordable housing component, which would require a modification to the GPP. In February of this year, after a competitive RFP process, a mixed use development proposed by a team comprising Silverstein Properties, Brookfield Properties, Omni New York and the Bar Development was conditionally designated by the LMDC directors. If the transaction is approved, ESD would own Site 5 and serve as landlord for the Site 5 long-term lease. Consistent with the planned swap, all rent payments would go to the Port Authority as compensation for the mu Memorial Museum and Performing Arts Center sites. Yesterday, LMDC's Board of Directors considered and voted to adopt the modified GPP, and based on an environmental assessment 
determined that no supplemental environmental impact statement is needed pursuant to National Environmental Policy Act and State Environmental Quality Review Act subject to public comments. Because of ESD's proposed role as owner and landlord, if a mixed-use project proceeds on Site 5, ESD's Board of Directors also are being asked to adopt the modified GPP. Please note the Board is not being asked to consider or approve the property transaction at this meeting. The proposed modifications to the GPP would permit either a commercial project or a mixed-use project on Site 5. Any specific transaction with a conditionally designated developer would require additional board action at a later date. Proposed design guidelines, which would govern mixed-use development at the site, have been included in your materials. As discussions continue with the public and with the designated developer, these design guidelines may be adjusted consistent with the ultimately approved project. Note that upon conditional designation, LMDC launched World Trade Center Site 5 Community Advisory Committee, which is comprised of elected officials and other local leaders and stakeholders, and began regularly presenting at the local Community Board 1 meetings. Feedback from the CAC and Community Board 1 has been instrumental in shaping multiple aspects of the proposed mixed-use project option, including the program, which would include affordable housing and a community facility, the design of the building, including ensuring that the program would be contextual with the adjacent Greenwich South neighborhood and the street frontage would be activated and community facing, maintenance and backup house operations, including in-building loading, deliveries and garbage handling, and public access through and around the building, including a connection to the adjacent Liberty Park. It is important to note that affordable housing has been a major discussion point over the last few months. The Site 5 RFP require that any mixed-use proposal comply with the affordability requirement of the city's mandatory inclusionary housing program. The proposed project would include approximately 1,200 residential units, and in consultation with the city, it was determined that 25% of the units, approximately 300 units, would be affordable to households making an average of 50% of area medium income, which currently equates to 42,000 for an individual and scaling up to 60,000 for a family of four on an annual basis. Community representatives and elected officials have called for increased affordable housing, including some demands that the project be 100% affordable with a preference for 9-11 victims and first responders. The project team is in ongoing discussions about these requests and will participate in an upcoming public forum being sponsored by the local elected officials on the issue. With board approval, LMDC, ESD, and the Port Authority will continue robust public engagement on the proposed project in the coming months. In addition to ongoing meetings with the CAC and CB1, as authorized by the directors, we will hold a public hearing anticipated to be January 12, 2022, followed by a public comment period, which we have agreed to hold open until February 15, 2022, at the request of local elected officials. Next spring, we will return to the directors for further consideration of the proposed modifications to the GPP and the proposed project. Today, as stated at the outset, the directors are being requested to take actions related to modifying the GPP to allow for residential, fitness, and community facility use at Site 5, in addition to the previously approved commercial use, to override certain local zoning regulations, and to allow a public hearing on the proposed modifications. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to take any questions. Are there any questions or comments from the directors on this item? As noted earlier, we received 10 comments from the public on this item, which were shared with the directors prior to today's meeting. These comments are also posted to today's meeting page on ESD's website, and they will also become a part of the corporate record of today's meeting. I will now entertain a motion for the approval of item 5A as presented by to Toby J. Ayasimi. Michael Rosen moved. Second. Benson Martin, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. 
uh, Emily Eklund will now present the Reimagine Workforce Preparation Grant Program item for our consideration. Emily, when you're ready, please begin. Good morning. Thank you, Hope. Uh, good morning, board. My name is Emily Eklund. I'm with NYSTAR, which is part of the Small Business and Technology Development Group under Provena. Today, I am requesting approval to establish grant disbursement agreements with four Reimagine Workforce Centers. At the April 22nd board meeting, we received approval to accept 3.2 million in funding from the New York State Department of Labor to provide entrepreneurship training to individuals displaced during the pandemic. Under this grant, 1,368,000 was earmarked to designate up to four reimagined workforce centers. We held a competition in which 14 applications were received and four applicants were chosen to receive the designation. Two centers are located in New York City one in Buffalo and one in Potsdam, New York, up in the North Country. The chosen applicants have been outlined in the board materials. These centers are expected to provide services across the state um, and in the regions in which they were chosen. Uh, the reimagined workforce centers will receive a total of $342,000 to deliver entrepreneur training and follow-up support to individuals looking to start a business as they re-engage in the economy. This grant ends August 31st, 2023. With board approval, we will move forward with grant disbursement agreements for the four Reimagine Workforce Center grantees. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to take any questions. Are there any questions or comments from the directors with regard to item 6A as presented by Emily Eklund? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now entertain a motion for approval. Or executive, so moved. Second. I will second it, Cesar Perales. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Next, Bet Yi will present the Entrepreneurship Ex Assistance Center's multi year grant item for our consideration. Bet, please begin when you're ready. Yes, good morning, directors. Good morning, Hope. Uh, congratulations. This is Bet Yi, uh, Senior Director of the Entrepreneur Development and uh, the Entrepreneurship Assistance Centers. Um, the directors are being asked to approve year one of a multiple three-year grant of up to 55000 each to four addition, for four additional Entrepreneurship Assistance Centers to a total of $220,000. On July 24th, 2021, the directors approved year one of a three-year grant to 19 EACs in the amount of $1,396,500 for grant contracts of $73,500 each, with the understanding that additional centers would be presented for approval at a later date. If approved, these four grants will commence on December 1 and end at the same time as the other preceding grants on June 30, 2022, that will conclude year one. These four EACs will complete the full complement of EACs available for year one. Renewal for years two and three are dependent on satisfactory performance of the preceding year. Funding will be from the 2021 uh, uh, 2022 slash um, FY2122 New York State budget appropriations for the EAC program and will further ESC's statewide program to promote business startups and to help existing businesses to expand. These services are designed um, um, I'm sorry. These services are designed on a working knowledge of the needs and resources of the community and its region and are operated by community-based organizations with close ties to local residents, which enable them to adopt services to local needs and demands. Um, thank you for your time. I am happy to answer any questions. We told Tiffany that a portion of the are there, excuse me, someone needs to mute their phone. The funds will be, will be drawn on December 1 and deposited into an ESC bank account. True? Elaine? Uh, Elaine does someone needs to mute their phone, please. Elaine? Elaine? I think it's Elaine. Okay. Are there any 
questions or comments from the directors with regard to item 7A as presented by Bet Yee? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to this item. I will now entertain a motion for approval. And then um, I'll just say Doug Carr and his team will arrange for the final cost to be paid. Hello. Elaine, if you can the, hear us, you someone can needs to line? mute their phone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I will now entertain a motion for approval of the item presented by Bet Yee. Benson Martin, so move. Second. Howard seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any any opposed? The motion carries, thank you. I'd like to now turn things over to Goldie Wexel, who will provide a summary of the administrative actions on today's agenda before I call for a vote on those items. Goldie, would you please go ahead? Yes, thank you, Hope, and good morning, directors. Um, as a reminder, in order to help streamline our board meetings, we previously implemented an oral summary presentation process in connection with the administrative actions section of our agenda. You receive a full set of written descriptive materials for each of these items in your board materials as you have for this meeting. But rather than having individual oral presentations made on each one, I will provide a brief summary of the items. At the conclusion of the summary, we will then entertain any comments or questions the directors may have. As noted earlier, we did not receive any comments from the public on any of these items. Following my presentation and any questions, the acting chair will then call for a motion to approve the entire slate of administrative actions, items 8A through 8M. The administrative action items submitted for your consideration today and for which you have received written materials are summarized as follows. Item 7A, or 8A, I think, is um, the DRI planning services contracts. This is a request for authorization for the corporation to enter into 14 consultant contracts for planning services in connection with round five of the downtown revitalization initiative. As noted in the materials, nine of these contracts will, be, will each be in the amount of $300,000, four of these contracts will each be for $600,000, and one contract will be for a total of $700,000. I'm going to address items 8B through I together. These eight items are requests for authorization for the corporation to enter into six marketing and promotion services contracts and two research services contracts in connection with the New York dairy industry. The marketing and promotion services contracts will total $13,880,000 and the research service contracts will total $1,474,079. As a reminder, these marketing and research contracts are all full fun fully funded through the dairy promotion order program and not with state funds. Item 8J is a consultant services contract amendment. Um, the corporation is seeking to amend its contract with the Obertine Courier to add $150,000 uh, $150, rather for a new total contract amount not to exceed $550,000. The contractor is providing construction oversight services for the Cree project in Marcy, New York. The additional contract funds are needed as the construction scheduled has been extended. Item 8K uh, is a request to approve a payment to the, Ken to the Kenmore Town of uh, Tonawanda Union Free School District in the amount of $844,498. Uh, the payment will offset a reduction in this year's revenue to the school district due to the closure of the Huntley Power Generating Facility in March 2016. Additionally, approval of this payment will bring total disbursements from the fund to approximately $38.7 million of the $140 million budgeted for the program. Item 8L is um, a request to approve an amendment of a contract with the Kevil Insurance Agency to continue providing insurance and risk assessment consulting services 
to ESD. This final amendment extends the contract through March 31, 2022 and increases the current contract of $384,825 by $100,000 with a new proposed total contract amount of $484,825. Corporate funding will be the amendment's funding source. Lastly, 8M is a request to approve a third amendment to the terms of a 45-year lease between UDC and the Commercial Center, Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary, uh, at, between the, commercially, the Commercial Center, Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary of ESD, and the uh, RDC, um, which is a subsidiary of the Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration Corporation, which operates a community services facility on Fulton Street in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. The City of New York receives all rent under the lease, and the City has requested that ESD amend the rent payment schedule for the remaining three years of the lease term in order to de decrease the rent burden on the Restoration Center as it prepares to purchase the property at the end of the lease. I will now turn it back to our acting chair who will call for any questions or comments you may have on any of these items before calling for a vote. Uh, we also have item related staff on the line today as well to take any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Goldie. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the directors on any of these 13 items? As noted earlier, we do not have any comments from the public with regard to these items. I will now uh, ask for a motion for the approval of items 8A through 8M as submitted on the written materials provided to the directors and summarized orally today. Howard Zemsky, so moved. Second. Michael Rosen, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. The remaining item on today's agenda is provided for the directors for their information and no presentation will be made. There being no further business, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? I so move, Cesar Morales. Thank you everyone for participation in today's meeting. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.